In this lesson, we will examine the strategy of testing the answer choices when tackling word problems. Now this strategy is often ignored because some students feel that the approach is not very mathematical and these students insist on taking a more algebraic approach. For the question shown here, the approach we learned in school would have us assign a variable to one age and then use this to assign an expression to the other age. From here we can write the following equation which we can solve for r. This of course is a valid approach. However, there will be times when the traditional approach is the slower approach. Notice that if you're solving a multiple choice question where there is only one correct answer, we know that the correct answer must be among these five options. So another approach is to test each answer choice beginning with the middle answer choice. Now why should we test answer choice C first? Well, you will find that the answer choices on the GRE are listed in either ascending or descending order. So if you test answer choice C and it does not yield the correct answer, you can sometimes eliminate other answer choices that are either less than or greater than C. Here's what I mean. We're going to use this table to keep track of our work. Now answer choice C says that Raina is 35 years old. So let's add this to our table. Now the question tells us that Abby is 11 years older than Raina. So if Raina is 35, then Abby must be 46 years old. When we find the sum of these two ages, we get 81. But the question tells us that the sum of their ages must be 73. So we can eliminate answer choice C, since the subsequent ages do not satisfy the given conditions in the question. Also notice that the two ages have yielded a sum of 81, which is greater than the required sum given in the question. In other words, the ages of Raina and Avi are too large to satisfy the given conditions. So Raina's age must be less than 35, which means we can also eliminate answer choices D and E. Notice that after testing just one answer choice, we are already halfway to finding the correct answer. At this point, which answer choice should we test next? Well, it does not matter which one we test next, because we are only going to test one more answer choice. If we test answer choice A, and it works, then we have found the correct answer. If we test answer choice A, and it does not work, then we will know that answer choice B must be the correct answer, and we will select it and move on. So let's test answer choice A, which tells us that Raina is 29 years old. Since Avi is 11 years older than Raina, he must be 40 years old. At this point, when we find the sum of their ages, we get 69. Since the question tells us that the sum of their ages must be 73, we can eliminate answer choice A, which means answer choice B must be the correct answer by process of elimination. As you can see, we were able to quickly find the correct answer without using any algebraic techniques. All right, now let's examine another question. Here we are given information about new and used vehicles, and we want to determine the number of trucks. Now at first glance, it might appear that checking the answer choices will take much longer than solving the question using traditional algebraic techniques. However, we can eliminate several of our answer choices without even testing them. For example, we know that the correct answer cannot be A. How do we know this? Well, the question tells us that one-third of the trucks are used. So if there were 32 trucks, then the number of used trucks would be one-third of 32, which is 10 and two-thirds. Since the number of used trucks must be a positive integer, answer choice A is impossible. Similarly, since answer choice C is not divisible by 3, it is not a valid option either. There is also a problem with answer choice D, which we can see using a table. If there were 45 trucks, then we would need 55 cars to make a total of 100 vehicles. However, the question tells us that one half of the cars are used, which means the number of used cars is one half of 55. Since the number of used cars must be a positive integer, we can eliminate answer choice D as well. At this point, we only need to test one answer choice. If it works, we'll take that answer. If it doesn't work, the other answer choice must be correct. Let's try answer choice E. This tells us that there are 48 trucks. 
Now, if there are 48 trucks, then there must be 52 cars for a total of 100 vehicles. If one third of the trucks are used, then there are 16 used trucks. And if one half of the cars are used, then there are 26 used cars. Using these values, we see that there is a total of 42 used vehicles, which matches the condition in the question. As such, the answer to this question is E. Okay, let's summarize. In this lesson, we learned how to test answer choices, and we learned how to eliminate impossible answer choices before testing answers.